The United States is reeling after right-wing militia staged a violent rally in the state of Virginia on the weekend, just south of Washington. One person was killed and 19 injured in an act of white supremacist terrorism when a man drove his car into a crowd. The US President Donald Trump has been roundly criticised, including by senior members of his own party, for initially appearing to share equal blame for the violence between the white supremacists and anti-Nazi protesters rallying at the same time. Former New Zealand rugby star Chris Marnie was in Charlottesville during the violence and we spoke earlier. First, this is a little bit of what he saw on the streets. This tide of hatred, of intolerance, of bigotry that has come to us and that has marched down with torches, it is brought here by outsiders. doing in Charlottesville that day? I had gone down to join uh, the counter-protest, uh, the anti-racism protest. Uh, a friend of mine was formerly the congressman for that district, the 5th district of Virginia, and Charlottesville is the main town. He is from that town, and so I had gone down to join him uh, in that protest. What was the atmosphere like when you got there? Uh, when we got down to the, to, the, uh, to the protest area, I mean, it was quite intimidating. Um, there were uh, many of the white nationalist uh, um, people with arms. Um, they were uh, yelling these uh, an antagonistic slogans, uh, screaming, uh, Hail uh, Trump, uh, Make America Great Again, um, you know, uh, We Will Not Be Replaced. Um, and there were these people in um, army fatigues. Uh, with semi-automatic rifles um, uh, standing uh, around the group. Um, and that's obviously before you get to uh, the, um, the sort of the body of the group itself, many of whom uh, had these shields, uh, sticks, um, were carrying sidearms. Um, so it was a, a sort of a protest um, like I'd never seen. Did you get the sense that it could turn violent or at that point did it seem like all of that stuff was for show? There were the two groups coming uh, into contact with one another. So uh, one group was marching past another, but you could see people starting to push and shove. Uh, there were multiple episodes where um, punches and scuffles broke out. These people were fighting one another and they also had, uh, were carrying weapons. I'd never seen so many people, so many civilians, just walking around with these weapons. Um, and it really is uh, quite terrifying. Um, but, but also, I'd never seen this kind of anger right, and this, uh, and this hatred uh, and the kind of the extent to which these people were feeding off uh, one another, these people within the, uh, the white nationalist sort of fascist groups. What role were the police playing? Um, so it was quite strange because the police were standing around the main area uh, where the white nationalist uh, sort of fascist uh, groups were. Um, but then as their, um, as their supporters came from other parts of town, uh, uh, marched into, into join them, they, they marched through uh, the anti-racism protesters. And the police just w w sort of were not organised you know, to prevent the two groups uh, from coming into contact with one another. They didn't sort of establish a cordon, uh, you know, a safe route, um, you know, for these, for these people to come in uh, and, and, and join the others. What about when the car attack happened? So after we left, then we heard that, uh, you know, these scuffles had got to a point where the police had separated the groups to different parts of town. So then we thought, OK, maybe it's safe to go back. Uh, and we were walking back to join um, uh, a, a protest, the protest uh, group. 
um, when the attack happened. We actually walked past the car, which was sat at the top of the hill looking down uh, the street at the protesters. And I thought to myself, it's strange because the car was at an intersection but wasn't driving through the intersection. It had a green light and it was just uh, sat there. And I didn't think much more of it. But then, you know, sort of 20 seconds or so later, it came uh, screaming past us um, and uh, into the crowd of protesters. What did you do when that happened? Um, well, I had actually walked to the side of the road. We were walking right down the middle of the road. So fortunately, I sort of walked to the side to check if a cafe was open. Um, and my friend, we'd gone beyond the speed bump. So my friend heard it hit the speed bump heavily because it was going way too fast. And um, so he was the one that filmed the footage. And uh, we obviously were out of the way. And then we started to move down or to run down to assist people that had been hurt, only to see the car start reversing back uh, through the crowd again and back towards us. So we jumped out of the way, uh, uh, of course, again. And, um, and then, you know, uh, a couple of us uh, started running up the road and I kept following the car, trying to uh, yell to people, you know, to watch out. Uh, and once I saw police officers trying to get their attention to get them to chase the vehicle. What did you make of President Trump's response that there was violence on both sides? Um, I mean, it's, it's a very sad episode of sort of equivocation, right? I mean, he said uh, violence by many parties. There was one party that conducted a terrorist attack, you know, uh, against, um, against the protest, the protest uh, movement. Um, of course, there were these other scuffles before that, you know, but to suggest that uh, those incidents were in any way comparable, you know, to, to a terrorist attack was particularly disappointing and repugnant. Chris Marnie, thanks for talking to us. Pleasure to be with you.